must be the pass Otor was talking about. It's Banuk territory just above. What are you doing, Eloy? This path leads to the cut. The Banuk have nothing to offer besides useless mysticism. The Eclipse won't stand idle while you waste time playing in the snow. Return to your desk. Surprised you're still checking up on me. I thought you had moved on. Well, forgive me for still being concerned with the fate of the world. I was thinking, Banuk shamans thread blue cables through their skin, right? Kind of like someone else we know, huh? So maybe the real reason you want me to stay clear of the Banuk is to stay clear of your past. It's not the past that concerns me, Eloy. It's the future. The impossible lack thereof. Which is why you should stop prattling and get back to what matters. But as usual, you do as you wish. Mm, touchy. will keep.
welcome, I guess. You sure you'll be warm enough up here, Nora? I've worked up a sweat from the climb. Made it to the cut, Outlander. Not that you'll stay long. This is Song's Edge, biggest settlement in the cut. Smoke rising from the mountain, and the village too. What's it for? Must be something big going on. Most of the village is moving towards that smoke. I do not think that our hunter's blood is on Aratak's hands. He led them to a great challenge. That is Trust Araya, they say. She'll return to us, they say. And yet here we are.
Raymond has abandoned us. Our chieftain has led our best to... You'd ready for a rare sight, Nora. Bergrin, purveyor of necessities. Most of the time, the Banuk burned their dead. But not today. Because the bodies couldn't be recovered. Aye, a nasty business. All their best warriors lost. So they're getting a different kind of send-off. grief, my hunters, and kill it! For our kin sees the fate all Banuk long for. Falling with their spears striking steel. Their struggle is over now. You have witnessed their spirits rise up into the blue sky and beyond to the blue light. But our struggle is only beginning. Soon, we will again take up the hunt against the daemon that frenzies the machines against us. And so I ask you, can you summon the courage of our fallen kin? Will you fight and die as well as they did? My courage, my spear! Enemies are prey. The daemon. That frenzies the machines. Machines that wiped out their best. And what do they want to do? Go back up there. Fools. A little advice. Uh, for free. Uh... Aloy. Aloy. I've been up here for two long winters, and I still can't make sense of the Banuk. Take this ruckus. It started with one of their shamans, uh, Orea, spouting on about spirits and demons up on Thunder's Drum. So they march their Warwick up there, and half of them get slaughtered by machines. When Orea vanished, I thought that Crazy might have gone with her, but no. Here's Big Aritok, gearing them up to do it all over again. What is it about the Banuk you can't make sense of? Mm. Well, everything's a test to them. A hardship to endure. A challenge to survive. Seems like they don't have much of a choice in a place like this. Yeah. A land cold enough to crack teeth, filled with wild animals. You think they'd accept a little reasonably priced aid? Well, believe me, I've tried to convince them, but a Banuk with nothing left to prove might just lie down and die. And Orea is the one who spoke about this daemon? That's right. Told Aratok and the others that it lives up on Thunder's Drum, and they believed him. But you don't. <laughs> Look, 
I don't know what Aurea found up there. A shaman's not going to talk to an outlander. The machines in the cut are getting more vicious, that's a fact. It could be because of the daemon, or it could be because they all got indigestion, for all I know. But Aurea's not around to explain. She took off, and no one knows why. Is Aratak a renowned warrior around here? He's a wary chieftain. His voice carries a lot of respect. Not that you hear much of it. Man talks about as much as a dead fish. But when he and Aurea came to town with their Warwick, it drew more Banute to this little burg than I'd ever seen. Knew what else I saw, Aloy? My own little trade route, stretching all the way back to the claim. Then he goes and leads them off to their death at the claws of angry machines. Uh, so much for my best customers. What are these Warricks about, Burgrind? Some sort of tribe within the tribe? Eh, not like our clan back home. You don't get born into these things. They hold tryouts. Prove your best at something and you might get a place. Some Warricks come and go. Some last as long as metal. The whole Banuk territory, Banur, is just a bunch of the biggest, oldest Warricks. I'm not sure if I'm less confused or more confused. <laughs> well, here's the sure thing. Each Warrick has a chieftain and a shaman. They make the decisions. All well and good, except the chieftains are hard-headed, and the shamans have their heads in the clouds. Have you ever heard of a man named Silence? Tall, deadly serious, cables in his skin? Like a shaman? Uh, I've heard that name once or twice, but always whispered. Like some boogeyman the Banuk want to forget. I'm not sure what went down, but I got the impression he messed with the Conclave. Or they messed with him. Conclave? All the most important shamans gather in Banur from time to time to keep up with the latest mumbo-jumbo. No idea how they all fit into one tent without those crazy headdresses getting locked up on each other. Aurea's been to that shindig, but when I asked her what it's like, she just gave me a dirty look. So if you want to know more, you'll have to find her and make her like you, I guess. <laughs> Good luck. You said you've lived out here for two winters? Aye. Back home, some fur traders told me about this steel-forsaken heap of tents. Good location. Ripe for change. We were barely scraping by until this place started filling up for Aurea. A great prophet is coming, they said. Oh, I heard prophet. Honest mistake. Not that the Banook are stingy, they just prefer to keep trade among themselves. We could get through to enough of them. We could really put this place on the map. Or at least on a map. We? Me and my daughter. Mm, my assistant, Varja. My assistant and my daughter. We seem to get along better as business partners. Her mother wanted me to show her a trade. She started tinkering with weapons. Say, when you need a break from this Banuk carry-on, stop in and see her. You're both, uh, mm, how do I put it, uh... Women? No, 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 I independent. Look for her at Long Notch, the easternmost Banuk camp. I want to know more about this daemon. Mm-mm, it's crazy talk, Aloy. Or there's something to it, something connected to how the machines behave. Then you need to find Aurea. She was last seen headed for the mountains they call the Ice Rafts. I've heard only the shamans know the trail beyond those frozen peaks. Mm. But I do know where you could find her apprentice, Naltuk. He went north of the river, chasing rumors. Rumors? Not the good kind. Sudden attacks in the snow. Strange new structures. Some say a new machine like no one's seen before. No, I'm definitely interested. Thanks for the talk, Burgrind. Don't mention it. I wonder if our talk could tell me more about Araya or Thunder's Drum. Might be worth a shot.
stone yield is always below. And these bandits should realize it will again. I do not want to hear this talk from you again. Doubt is heavier than a week snow. Forgive me, my chieftain. We will be ready for the next attempt. But this will not be an attempt. It must be done. Do you understand? My chieftain. Good. Outlander, I suppose you wish to speak? Did your Warwick come from this place? No, he rallied most of our hunters from across Banyur to face the threat of the demon. But I was born here and stayed to fight the Karja when others retreated into the mountains. A few of my old warriors remain with me, those who survived. This demon you talked about. If you are hardy enough, you can venture out and see the signs yourself. It has changed the machines, made them fiercer, stronger. But what is it? A matter for the shamans to debate. Aurea knows about this daemon. Where would I talk to her? She does a shaman's work. That is not for the eyes and ears of others. Certainly not an outlander's. There are other Warax in Song's Edge too? Yes. The village has its own life, for all Banuku need trade or shelter. After the war ended, it sprang up from what was once a campsite, quick as the bloom between frosts. Perhaps it will last, until the Karja seek war again. You're set on going back to the mountain? I put my word to it. Even with the risks being so great? The risk of what? Death? It would be a worse fate to bow our heads to the challenge and say too much. Well, I guess that's it then. Good. I prefer deeds to words. Right. Trust Sakuli's instincts. I've never known one of her painful disappointments. No more music. What stops that? You seem sad, stranger. I heard you mention a flood. Yes, a sudden deluge, without rain or melt to explain it. I'm Lalai, the drummer of Deep Din. Or at least I was, until it disappeared under the waters. Deep Din. What's that? A hollow, carved out by the old ones. A chamber, a basin, and a musical instrument all at once. My life 
my calling. I'd explain it by playing for you if I could. But its pipes are deep under the water now. So Deep Din is a place and a musical instrument? Yes. Pipes that carry a perfect tone beneath a sonorous basin. A wondrous edifice the old ones used to carry music far and wide. During the war, my father played the pipes to rally the Banuk against the Karja. I'm the drummer now. But our battles are few and far between. Mostly I play for the joy of it. Or to remember my family. Of course, if the waters don't recede, what's the point of joy? Or remembering. So the waters came fast. One day it was dry. The next, the nearby river had risen and the entire basin was flooded. I don't understand it. There was no rain, not even any clouds, and yet the river rose higher than I'd ever seen it. And there it remains. A flood without rain. That is strange. Where is this place? I'll have a look if I'm in the area. Just northwest of here. Look all you like. But I don't see what good it'll do. The floodwaters aren't going anywhere. How does one ask a river to relent? Feel free to listen and learn. Our ways may suit you. torment him to see his legacy drowned. Welcome to the cut, stranger. Okay, if I want to learn more about how this daemon affects 
the machines. I've got to find Maria. And to do that, I need to talk to her apprentice, who followed the river north. Outlander, wait, wait a moment. That weapon of yours, Outlander, that spear, I can see the blue light upon it. This? It was made by an acquaintance of mine. Ah, a shaman. Uh, no. More of a tinker? A tinker does not understand the spark in the metal, the song in the metal like this. But it could be improved upon, modified with the help of the old ones. Far north of here, there is a cave, a, a shaft in the snow. Within it is a nest of metal birds. Find a bird that hasn't been stripped by shaman's past. Look for a rail inside it, the length of your spear. That's all I can tell you. Get a rail from some metal birds in a cave. Sounds perfectly normal. Up all One day, the stone of the din was dry. The next, the flood. Dawn breaking. Every time's different. Banakai went into the wastes and let the wind whip her cheeks. And when the cold brought sleep, she dreamt of light. She saw it behind the world, a great calming sheet of icy blue. And she saw something new. Herds of machines, each filled with the same blue light. When she woke, she knew which star to follow. She walked for many days and nights until she arrived at a temple built from sparkling ice. At the gates of the temple, she was met by the machines from her dream, who bowed to her as she entered. Inside, Banukai discovered the blue light, bubbling from a hole in the snowy earth like a spring. You bid me come, she said. My people need aid. Will you provide it? The machines whispered to Banukai. We go where the light goes. For we are its chosen vessels. There is darkness in your heart. It cannot hold the light for long. Carry it to your people if you must. But the cost will be great. Banukai waded into the pool. The light reared like a nest of snakes and struck Banukai, piercing her skin, filling her up. Banukai did not scream, though she was in agony. Banukai did not collapse, though her limbs shook. She climbed from the pool and carried the light inside her. She marched toward home and the machines marched behind her. As she walked, the light struggled to push its way out of her, but the machines were there to aid her. She sewed her body shut with their cables, patched herself with their metal, and kept the light within. When she arrived, the forces of the Ravnus tribe had surrounded the camp. 
Although the light had left her with a thousand wounds, Bunakai charged. And because she held the light, the machines followed. The ravenous tribe killed many, but those in camp rushed to join in battle. They gathered pieces of the fallen machines and from them fashioned weapons. And it was with these that Banakai's people repaid the suffering the ravenous tribe had wrought upon them. When quiet descended, Banakai finally fell. The machines bowed their heads and her werak wept. The light she'd held within her drifted from her wounds and rose to the sky. And for just a moment, before life left her, Banakai knew the truth of the blue light. And she felt peace. We remember Banakai, the first to crawl from the cave beneath the world, who brought the machines to us. When we speak the name of our tribe, we remember her. And we will not forget. The Banuk of Song's we edge remember are our own Banukai. And we deserve when the paint old ones were fresh in their graves and our numbers were still Can't let the smoke from Thunder's drum distract you. We all have jobs to do. Quite a view you've got up here. It's a useful perspective. How fleeting we are when the world is so wide. From up here, you can see how the light paints across the land, ever changing. That's a lesson. All our marks will pass. That outlook sounds a little depressing for a painter. Haven't met many artists, have you? Song's Edge needs new stories. I scrubbed its past off this rock to start anew, but a new start needs new colors, fresh pigments like none have seen. Have you always been a painter? I've always painted. But I wasn't a painter until I was driven out of Banur. Up there, the markings are eternal. They paint over the same lines, the same colors, over and over. As a child, I learned from copying them. As I grew, my heart sank at the familiarity. All of us Banuk might as well be trapped in glacier ice. We have the look of life, but never really moving. These pigments you want, where should I look for them? Salts gather at the edges of geysers and hot pools. Crystals cling to the rocks and cliffs. The Banuk rock paintings are impressive, but, um... You want to know what they mean? That's not the right question, but... I'll answer anyway. Some are a call to the machines. The sacred shapes you see on metal casings, or on a cauldron door. Do the machines listen to the call? I don't know. 
Others, like mine, are a call to the tribe. You could say, inspiration or prophecy. And sometimes even men listen, if the painting is loud enough. I'll see what I can find for you. Seek out the vibrant ones. A spring of sudden color among snow or rock or metal. That's its own reward, but I'd reward you as well. were still small. It was a different time. Who led us through the frozen wastes. We also remember the ravenous tribe. Who delighted in seeking the man. No more music. What's up in the Whatever they do, they do with passion. What makes the great warehouse?